ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's Impact interview. My name is Hongnam Shah, a senior content analyst from Leader Associates. This Impact interview is actually part of, of our upcoming event, Asing Wind Energy 2023, which will be held on October 30 and 31 in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Norway has proven to be a valuable trade partner for Vietnam. With over 40 Norwegian enterprises operating in the countries and an investment of approximately 192 million US dollars. In fact, Norway has ranked 41 out of 141 countries and territories that finance projects in Vietnam. In terms of the offshore wind sector, Vietnam and Norway share many similarities. Both countries have expensive coastlines, a strong presence in the fisher industry, and a firm political commitment to addressing the challenges of climate change. Therefore, Norway's extensive offshore experience, abundant offshore wind potential, an established energy industry, and all you guys in the renewable energy serve as a perfect example for Vietnam. The ongoing and future political cooperation between Norway and Vietnam in the area of capital investments, marine operations, and offshore operations will continue to be crucial in driving Vietnam's booming offshore wind sector. Today, we are honored to have the privilege of sitting down with Ms. Hendy Sobakin, the ambassador of Norwegian Embassy in Vietnam, for this interview. The ambassador will be participating in our physical event, Asian Wind Energy 2023, representing Norwegian Embassy. During his 15 minutes interview, the ambassador will share her interesting personal story related to Vietnam and shed light on Norway's successful experience in developing offshore wind projects, establishing a supply chain, and facilitating Vietnam's offshore wind project growth by creating a healthy pathway for active collaborations between the two nations. So Ms. Hendy Sobakin, uh, welcome to today's interview and I'm really excited to begin our conversation by asking you some really in interesting questions about yourself. Um, so first of all, could you please tell us a little bit about your background and your role as the ambassador of the Norwegian Embassy in Vietnam? Yes, I've been part of the Norwegian Foreign Service for 26 years now and uh, I've been posted pretty much all over the world. Started out in the Middle East, uh, in Amman, Jordan. Uh, I've been working in um, our embassy in Washington, D.C., and briefly our UN delegation in, in North America. And um, I've been posted to Nairobi in Kenya, uh, Africa. Um, and uh, But recently, I've spent uh, most of my time um, in foreign missions here in Southeast Asia, in Jakarta, uh, Indonesia, and in uh, Yangon, Myanmar, before now finally uh, coming to Hanoi in Vietnam. Um, and being here in Vietnam, I find really exciting. Um, we have a lot of the same uh, interests and priorities, and I find that particularly uh, relating to climate change, um, uh, the green energy shift and sustainable ocean economy, uh, we really have a lot of potential to, um, to grow our cooperation even further. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you so much for sharing us with your um, you know, interesting uh, personal connection and professional connection with Vietnam and the whole ASEAN regions. And, uh, and second question, I'm actually wondering how has your experience been living and working in Vietnam so far. Are there any cultural aspects that has particularly fascinated you while living in Vietnam? It's really great to be in Vietnam. Um, my family and I, we, we all love it here. Um, so we enjoy exploring our neighborhood in, in Huan Kiem in Hanoi and um, learning as much as we can about the, the very dramatic and fascinating history of, of Vietnam. We try to travel as much as we can around the beautiful country and everywhere we find people are very, very friendly and, and helpful. So we're really having a great experience here. Um, as to your questions of, of some aspects that particularly fascinates me, I think in Hanoi there are two things. Um, 
one is the the way that life just seems to kind of spill onto the the pavement, um, whether it's family life or, or all sorts of cafes and eateries or, or people's businesses. Um, it sometimes makes my walk through the office uh, a little bit of an obstacle course, but mainly I think it's the way that you can just feel the positive energy uh, of all the activity. Um, and I think that the second thing that uh, is quite fascinating, I think, for any foreigner is to discover how much uh, can be done uh, with and on uh, SMI. <laughs> I, it's quite some incredible things that I've, I've seen, uh, uh, seen in the traffic here. Um, but all of this, I think, are, are things that really make Hanoi a, a unique city. All right, thank you, Ambassador. And so lovely to hear that you're actually enjoying your life in Vietnam with your family. I hope you can still, you know, enjoy the rest of your time in Vietnam as well. And um, in terms of the uh, professional aspect, as we all know, like these um, Norway's years of experience in marine and offshore wind operations, uh, there is no doubt that Norway is in a ideal position to contribute to Vietnam's expansion, not this offshore wind market. And um, additionally, Norway has already proven to be a valuable trade partner with over 40 Norwegian enterprises operating in uh, Vienna. So could you please outline the current financial support and ongoing cooperation provided by Norwegian government to support Vietnam's marine spatial planning and the other offshore wind uh, power aspect? Mm. Yeah, so when it comes to financial support, uh, most of Norwegian support now goes through some of the global, the big global funds. Uh, so the Green Climate Fund and the Global Environment Facility. Um, but also, of course, as you mentioned, the private sector is very important and they are ready to invest at scale and long term in the energy sector in, uh, in Vietnam. Um, we when it comes to direct support, we are supporting a project through UNDP on marine spatial planning to develop a, a legal and policy framework and then to have um, uh, pilots in some of the, the regions. Um, another very important part of our profile in Vietnam um, is our participation in the Joint Energy Transition Partnership together with the G7 countries and Denmark. Um, and uh, this really should help to enhance the shift to renewable energy in Vietnam. Um, as with any new industry that's developing, uh, offshore wind is going to require new regulatory frameworks. <clears throat> and that is also an area where we engage closely with different parts of uh, Vietnamese government and, and, uh, and private sector. Um, so this, uh, this can happen uh, in different ways of, of sharing experience and, and expertise. Um, on the policy dialogue uh, level uh, with exchanges of visits and delegations and so on, um, but also institutions, um, Norwegian institutions like the um, Marine Research Institute and um, the Directorate for Water Resources and Energy, uh, Meteorological Institute, they cooperate with their Vietnamese counterparts uh, and share more technical uh, information and experience. Um, but then again, a lot of the expertise on offshore wind sits with the private sector. Um, and they are also strongly engaged here in Vietnam in, in sharing their expertise. Um, some of the concrete uh, questions that we are sharing our, our experience on are how to identify areas suitable for offshore wind. Um, and the measurement of wind speed uh, based on meteorological data. Also, again, uh, relating to marine spatial planning, when how to manage that type of process uh, that really needs to include all the stakeholders. Um, finally, I'd like to mention that we are together with international partners and, and with Vietnam, Norway's taking the lead on drafting a supply chain report 
I think this will be very important in helping to identify opportunities, uh, both in the north and south of Vietnam, uh, relating to the development of the offshore wind sector. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, in order to strengthen the partnership and create the clear pathways for the investments by Norwegian energy firms or um, the private sector, as you mentioned, so what do you think are the optimal course of actions for the Norwegian business and ventures to invest in the energy project in Vienna, particularly in the area of offshore wind power, um, hydrogen production, and beyond? Mm. Well, a lot uh, depends on what happens here in Vietnam. So the approval of the um, power development plan number eight is a very important step. And hopefully uh, that approval will also clear the way for uh, other policy decisions and um, more detailed regulatory frameworks that are necessary for the companies to go ahead with their investments. Um, so as you say, there are many Norwegian businesses uh, in, in Vietnam and, and also uh, big companies that are involved in the wind sector, both offshore and, and onshore. Um, I'd like to mention in particular Equinor, uh, which is one of the leading companies globally in offshore wind and the most advanced when it comes to floating offshore wind. Um, they are working to accelerate uh, offshore wind development in Vietnam and uh, have entered an MOU with Petro Vietnam uh, to explore uh, further opportunities. Mainstream is another majority owned Norwegian company um, that already have wind projects in Vietnam with more than 2.3 uh, gigawatt uh, gross capacity in development. Uh, and this includes Vietnam's first and largest offshore wind farm in Sam Chang province. Um, finally, also Skartec is one of the big Norwegian actors. Um, they are taking a leading role in the renewable industry through solar and onshore wind um, with the Damne wind uh, farm in operation. Um, and they have also signed a col collaboration agreement with the Vietnamese company MT Energy uh, to finance, build and operate large scale solar projects. Uh, you also asked about hydrogen um, and Norway is very committed to developing a coherent value chain for hydrogen with low mm -hmm. to zero emissions. Um, and in the future, we see potential for hydro hydrogen to replace fossil fuel fuels um, in some of the sectors where it's otherwise very hard to find low carbon solutions. So for example, in the steel industry um, and when it comes to transport sector, particularly the maritime uh, sector, which is of course very important both for Norway and uh, Vietnam. Um, but we also know that there are still a number of, of um, technical uh, developments that are necessary uh, for this sector to really take off and to um, reduce the costs. So we see this as being somewhere into the, um, into the future still. And it's also going to take a lot of international co collaboration to make sure that we can actually develop an international market uh, for hydrogen. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you so much for sharing the specific um, you know, information about the leading uh, Norwegian cooperation that has uh, been playing an instrumental role in uh, contributing in Vietnam's wind sector. And um, as we all know that Norway and Vietnam uh, also shares uh, a lot of mutual geographical advantages in terms of uh, expensive coastlines and extraordinary wind conditions. So as a leader in the wind energy industry, uh, what valuable lessons can Norway um, share with Vietnam to consolidate Vietnam's global wind supply chains and facilitate the technological cooperation? As you mentioned, technological uh, cooperation is actually a core part of um, the consideration of Norway. Yeah, no, I think Norway and Vietnam actually both have um, very good starting points here. The experience that we have from the oil and gas sector and the supply chain uh, linked to, to oil and gas, a lot of those skills are transferable to developing an offshore wind sector as well. Um, <clears throat> of course, in Norway, we also uh, put a lot of emphasis on sustainability. 
throughout uh, throughout these sectors and, and, and through all our innovations for the sector. Uh, and that again goes for the whole value chain. So whether it's about green port infrastructure uh, or already in Norway now hydrogen powered service vessels to sub um, and then also subsea inspection robots. Um, so we're very proud in Norway that we really have already a, a complete value chain for offshore wind. And, uh, and we are very keen to work with Vietnam uh, to also develop this, this whole sector um, and, and seeing how Vietnam could make use of all the human capacity and technology and meteorologic and geological data, uh, as well as institutional capacity that, that comes from this experience from, from oil and gas. Uh, Vietnam really has a comparative advantage here uh, over countries with, without that uh, previous offshore experience. Um, if I were to point out some key uh, lessons from the Norwegian experience um, in developing offshore wind, I would highlight, first of all, learning by doing. Uh, I mean, this is the new sector. Um, but we can, we don't have to have all the perfect systems before we, we start moving. Uh, we can learn through a phased approach uh, where we give ourselves time to learn and adapt from one phase to the, to the next. So in other words, um, we've found that it's, it's impossible to try to have a perfect database and, and perfect knowledge before we start. Uh, mm -hmm. You really don't gain that knowledge and understanding un until you try. I think the, the second lesson I would highlight uh, is to ensure the engagement of all stakeholders from the start. Um, so this would be, of course, the, the, uh, the government and the industry, but also particularly academia and, and sci scientific uh, institutions. And um, you will probably hear echoes here of, of the approach to marine spatial planning, where, where we also um, put a great deal of, of emphasis on, on, on inclusiveness. Um, finally, uh, I would like to highlight the importance of developing uh, local supply chains uh, for the sector uh, as, a, as a crucial enabler for developing offshore wind. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, I think all of your you know, suggestions and the kind of sharing from the experience of Norwegian development of the wind sector would definitely be a really valuable and uh, meaningful reference for the Vietnam's development. And I totally agree with you, it's um, always valuable for the industry to, you know, keep practicing well learning because that's the really ideal and mature way to uh, develop its own supply chain and um, technology solutions. And um, preparing and developing offshore wind energy sets, as well as deploying offshore wind power, actually poses new challenges task for Vietnam and the other developing economies. Unfortunately, Vietnam can benefit from the um, experience of Norway's mature offshore wind industry through uh, bilateral cooperation. Uh, so do you have any specific suggestions for the marine spatial planning from the aspect of the regulatory framework? Because as you mentioned previously, the regulatory framework is also a really crucial part in you know, supporting the industry. Mm. Yes, um, marine spatial planning frameworks are, are really essential uh, to find a way of bringing together all the different stakeholders um, and to secure sort of all the stakeholders' interests and, and to manage their coexistence uh, in, in the same area. Um, and also, of course, uh, to make sure that the use of marine resources uh, is sustainable. Uh, and this becomes really uh, particularly relevant when you're developing a whole new industry like offshore wind. Um, I have to say that Norway's uh, taken decades to developing uh, to develop the systems for marine spatial planning uh, and integrated ocean management that we have today. Um, and we are happy to share uh, our, our experiences and the lessons that we have learned with Vietnam, uh, including lessons from mistakes that, that we have made. Uh, so that's why we are supporting this uh, project through UNDP with, uh, with MONRE to develop the, the policy and legal framework and to have the, 
uh, the models tested at the subnational level. Um, again, as for some of the key considerations uh, in developing these uh, the, the marine spatial framework. Um, first of all, as I've said, it needs to be inclusive. Um, all relevant industries and government bodies, both national and local, need to be involved. You need to have the scientific institutions and you, and you need to have the, the local community, communities uh, somehow uh, involved in the process. Secondly, uh, it, we put a great deal of emphasis on, on having an ecosystem-based approach with a really strong scientific foundation so that we can ensure that our marine environment uh, uh, is, is maintained and, and that these industries are uh, sustainable. Um, finally, um, what we have found is, is again, it's a, it's a continuous process. You don't make one special um, marine spatial planning um, plan <laughs> for, for that lasts forever. You have to keep keep doing it to keep um, updated with the environmental developments and also uh, to learn and adapt based on the uh, effects from from industry on on the environment and how the industries are developing. Okay, thank you, Ambassador. And as I remember in the last question, you also mentioned this, actually the engagement of all stakeholders from the supply chain is also really crucial and imperative for you know, developing a healthy industry and a sustainable industry. So uh, in terms of the local communities, I think they also will play an extraordinarily important role to ensure the equitable sharing of benefits and the protection of you know, venerable groups associated with the development of wind farm. So can you please share uh, Norway's successful experience in not only protecting the benefits of local communities, but also enabling them to benefit from the um, actual development of this large scale onshore or offshore, offshore wind farms? Because I think that experience would also be a really valuable and practical reference for the developing economies uh, such as Vietnam. Mm, yeah, I think uh, one point is to uh, start by trying to avoid uh, conflict with local communities. And uh, one way of doing that is having the offshore wind farms really as far offshore as is possible. Um, because you also want to have as big as possible uh, wind farms to get the costs down. Um, nearer to shore, we know there are, there's a lot more competition, a lot more different activities. So to keep the, the offshore wind as far out as possible is, is a good way of, of avoiding any conflict to start with. Um, then the, um, when it comes to the, the positives are the benefits, um, uh, the supply chain for offshore wind uh, has the potential to, to create a lot of economic growth in local communities. Um, and to make sure that that happens, uh, to have these discussions between the national level and uh, uh, local authorities and business from the start is, is really a key. Um, job creation, of course, is, is always very important uh, as a positive effect for local communities. Um, and I hope that this supply chain report that Norway is now having drafted for Vietnam can be helpful in, in identifying those opportunities uh, in Vietnam. Um, so when we're talking jobs, of course, to be able to take up those jobs, then you need to have the skills. So, so training, I think, is a very important consideration as well in, in the early phases. And, and here, I think local communities and the businesses who want to invest really have a shared interest in making sure that uh, relevant training is provided for, for the jobs that will be needed. Thank you, Ambassador. I also agree with you that training is actually so important for you know, not only making the local community be aware of what the um, wind industry is really is, but also make them be able to substantially benefit from working in this industry. And um, Nori is a member of the uh, International Partner Group and the Just Energy Transition Partnership, known as JETP, uh, for Vietnam. So how do you see its implication to Norway Vietnam cooperation in general, and particularly to the development of Vietnam's wind energy industry under this uh, partnership? 
Well, I think the debt P, as we call it itself, can be um, contribute very positively to the wind energy sector in Vietnam. And as part of that, that Norway Vietnam cooperation um, will also be, be important. Um, within the, the discussions between the Vietnam government and the international partners in, in debt P, uh, we are now getting closer to an agreed plan for how the funds uh, will be used. And offshore wind will very likely uh, be a priority area in debt P. Um, I think another benefit of JetP is that it um, provides a framework for a lot more cooperation and collaboration among international actors. And, and I think this in itself can help accelerate Vietnam's implementation of, of the PDP-8, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which in turn then is, is necessary to really get the private sector on board. Norway's contribution through JetP uh, is uh, through NORFUND. Um, this is the Norwegian Investment Fund for Developing Countries. Um, and they have set up a climate investment fund uh, where Vietnam is one of the priority countries. Um, so this fund is ready to invest up to 250 million US dollars uh, in offshore wind and other energy projects in Vietnam to support the implementation of, of JetP. Uh, and Northfund, I should add also, they in their mandate, um, they are also responsible for really focusing on creating jobs and improving lives um, uh, when they invest in businesses to drive the energy transition. So I, I am very hopeful that this can make a very positive contribution in, in Vietnam. Um, thank you, Ambassador. We're also looking forward to witness the positive effect of the um, JFT cooperation between Norway and Vienna. And um, considering the current prospect and the challenges in Vietnam's growing wind energy sector, as well as the impressive market presence of Norwegian corporations. So um, my final question would be, what are your expectations for deepening sustainable cooperation between Norway and Vietnam in the field of offshore wind in the next decade? And what's your best wish for the wind energy industry in not only Vietnam, but also the whole ASEAN uh, region? Well, I think the potential is great. And uh, I believe we're going to see continued collaboration between Norwegian companies like Equinor and Skartec and Mainstream and, and Vietnamese uh, partners. Um, I think the shared history that we have from oil and gas is part of uh, what gives us, um, makes our companies very compat compatible in terms of their competence. Um, and also, as I've said, in terms of the whole supply chain for offshore wind, uh, I think there's great potential. And I think the engineering skills uh, in the Vietnamese workforce uh, gives Vietnam a comparative advantage that hopefully can turn Vietnam into a, both a producer and exporter um, of uh, not just wind energy itself, but also relevant offshore wind equipment uh, to the region and to the world markets. Well, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope uh, maybe to add also, I, I hope that uh, we can do this in a very sort of collaborative uh, way so that when we know challenges will arise, but uh, by collaboration, we can solve those challenges um, underway as we go. Um, for ASEAN, I think uh, a very interesting area to explore is the possibility of a common energy market in ASEAN. Um, I know there's growing interest in this among ASEAN countries. We know Laos is already an exporter of renewable energy and Vietnam also has ambitions to, to become so. Um, in Northern Europe, we have had a functioning common uh, energy market for many years already, uh, where Norway is the main supplier of, of energy. Um, so I think, again, here's an area where there could be some interesting um, experience to, to share. And, and I think the bottom line, you asked me for my best wishes for, for uh, this sector. And I mean, this is really about the green energy transition is essential. Uh, to combat climate change and save our planet. So um, 
really, I uh, can only wish the best of success to the future of uh, wind energy industry in Vietnam and, and in the ASEAN region. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, kind wishes and sharing us with your uh, impressive insights and experience with us today. I think your valuable knowledge and expertise in the offshore wind sector has provided us with a deeper understanding about the potential cooperation between Norway and Vietnam, and as well as the advanced experience that Norway has shared with the world. And I think uh, your role as ambassador of the Norwegian Embassy in Vietnam has also undoubtedly contributed to strengthening the bilateral ties between the two nations and the ongoing cooperation and support from Norwegian government in terms of marine spatial planning, offshore wind development, the showcase, the commitment to a more sustainable future. And in conclusion, we want to extend our heartfelt appreciation to uh, Ms. Hamdi Sobeke, uh, Ambassador of Norwegian Embassy in Vietnam for joining us today in this impact interview and sharing us with uh, this impressive stories. And um, also we want to thank our audience because your presence and um, support have enriched the whole experience of this uh, you know, renewable journey as well as development of the onshore, offshore and onshore wind sector. As we look forward to the next decades, we are really optimistic about the deepening sustainable cooperation between Norway and Vietnam and the booming and burgeoning wind sector um, in the future of Vietnam. On behalf of Leader Associates in ASEAN Wind Energy 2023 events, we finally want to extend our best wishes to the wind energy industry in Vietnam and uh, the other ASEAN countries. May the future be filled with sustainable energy solutions and a fruitful collaboration that benefits both environment and our societies. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to your participation in uh, ASEAN Wind Energy 2023 event in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Thank you.